Hello again everybody and welcome back to another edition of On The Range. And this time again I'm sitting in the HNC, although a lot of what I cover this time will apply directly to any aircraft that you fly in a flight simulation. But specifically what I want to talk about are checklists that you'll occasionally, when I'm flying mission videos, you'll hear me reference and read from and perform steps out of. And I really want to go over two specific checklists that are, I think are just really, really great and provide you with a lot of information. So I will show you that and show you some different techniques and different ways to use the information. Now the primary source for information on the A10C, it is, a, as it should be, the flight manual that comes with the A10C DCS software. It's extremely comprehensive. That's where you will go for any information that you want to know about systems or how to do something in the aircraft. It gives detailed procedures, great graphics, great information. But when you're in the air and you don't want to read through paragraphs upon paragraphs of information, that's where a condensed checklist can really help you out. So what I do is, for the longest time, I would print out a checklist and have it on my knee and now what I do is I have the checklist on an iPad and have it obviously you can't see it here but if you're looking right there it would be on my right knee and I use that during the mission just to reference procedures to give myself a little bit of cross checks but I don't have to memorize absolutely everything now as we get closer to some virtual reality headsets starting to come out, thinking specifically the Oculus Rift, which I'm extremely looking forward to trying out. We're not going to be able to look around and see things in the real world. It's going to be, our vision is going to be constrained to what we have inside the cockpit. So I'm experimenting with different ways to overcome that, and the best option as it stands right now is to bring up the kneeboard in the simulation, so, and that's right shift K. And you can see that when I bring up my kneeboard that I have the first page of a checklist called up. And it is possible to add your own information to the kneeboard. By default it has uh, maps, airfield information, approach procedures, but you can add your own things. And I'll include a link to the forum post that describes how to do that below. But I have the first of the two checklists that I use called up, and there are two versions specifically that I want to cover. And I don't mean to exclude anybody, there are a lot of great products out there, but these are just the two that I happen to use. If you know of a better one, please, by all means, let me know. But this first checklist is the one done by Lobo. It's extremely comprehensive, and I'll just flip through it real quick. It begins with procedures for starting the aircraft, just like any checklist would. And more importantly, it gets into some more detailed descriptions, like, for example, here... I have takeoff and approach speed charts that I can use to, based on my aircraft gross weight, compute a rotation and takeoff speed for the A-10. I have approach and touchdown speeds where, again, based on my gross weight, I can compute an approach and touchdown speed that I would need to use for the mission. And it just goes through more things, but what this really does well is it includes some more detailed information for setting up and employing weapons. And down at the bottom, like for example here, it has step-by-step -step procedures, and then it has some explanatory notes down at the bottom. So this guy compi compiled a lot of information from a lot of different sources and really did a great job of bringing a lot of information together and put a lot of hard work into this, which is much appreciated. So coming down to some more things this one does extremely well, once it gets past the procedures, it gets into just some useful to have tables like for example this is CMSP dispense program so if I had my countermeasures called up I could tell what program does what it also has RWR threat charts has example nine line briefings example Z diagrams and capabilities airport data crosswind charts just a whole lot of very very cool useful information that if you go through the trouble to fill this stuff out can help you out immensely when it comes to preparing and executing your mission. Now that's the first checklist that I use, and again, that's the one done by Lobo, and I will have links to both of these checklists down at the bottom in the video description. So let me back out and reload with the other checklist. I'll be right back. And I'm back now with the other checklist loaded up, 
And this one is prepared by Snoopy with the 476th Virtual Biter Group. I guess that's a like a multiplayer group of people who enjoy flying the A10C. And where this one excels is that it is formatted exactly like what you would find in the real world A10C flight crew checklist. So it goes through procedures, has uh, very detailed procedures outlined for you. It has uh, diagrams and charts, everything that you would expect out of a, a real world a flight crew checklist. Like for example, this one tells you in a lot of detail how to calculate your your rotation and takeoff speed. This one tells you how to calculate your final approach speed and uh, touchdown speed. So a lot of good information in this one. And additionally where this one really excels is that it has detailed emergency procedures. So this goes into a lot more detail than the DCS A10C manual that comes with the game goes into as far as you know what indications the cockpit mean on the caution warning panel, what steps to take in the event of, of a emergency or aircraft damage. It just goes into a lot of detail on actions to take in the event of an emergency. So that's really where this one excels. It's set up more like a real world ATNC checklist. So there you have it. Two examples of very, very well put together checklist. One by Lobo and one by Snoopy. So during mission videos, as you hear me calling out procedures and reading checklist items as I perform them, that's exactly what I'm looking at. Usually it's on an iPad on my lap, but as I try to find better ways to make this work once the uh, virtual reality headsets start to come out, I'm going to try to integrate that on into more and more into the kneeboard and have that displayed on the screen as I go. So folks, that is it for this edition, and again, links to everything that I described here is going to be down in the description of the video, so if you did enjoy it, please do leave a like, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.